uh, doing research. So our first speaker is uh, Professor uh, Hyun. Please welcome him. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so. Um, uh, thanks for the introduction. And actually, our chair, uh, I mean, phrase everything I want to say at the beginning. So uh, last week, uh, we had uh, some school uh, basically introducing the basic concept of statistical physics. But there's no, uh, basically, there's no, uh, 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 I mean, clap, I mean uh, lecture on the life science component. I mean, there was nothing about the life science component. So maybe. Uh, next two days, we can actually hear something about uh, uh, life science and application of uh, statistical physics in life science. And maybe this is the first example. So, molecular chaperone. What is the molecular chaperone? Okay. So, molecular chaperones are, are uh, cellular uh, machinery that actually consume large amount of ATP to help uh, protein or RNA to fold into their uh, functionally competent state, native state. And uh, the, uh, actually, the, the history of the molecular chaperone is actually very long. And in field is kind of dominated by the experimentalists, the biochemists, or molecular biologists who are very well familiar with the equilibrium chemical thermodynamics. And the, um, uh, yeah. oh, sorry. If you look at uh, the chaperone for protein and RNA, it uh, looks very different. But uh, um, there, some underlying principle uh, for their action is, uh, can be described by some unified framework. And I want to, uh, maybe I can actually emphasize the non equilibrium nature of a chaperone assisted folding in this talk. Okay. So um, let me start with the protein and protein folding and protein chaperone. I mean, protein folding is uh, basically defined by the uh, so three-dimensional sequence, uh, I mean, one-dimensional sequence, which it in, uh, encodes the three-dimensional native structure of protein. And uh, for a given, prote uh, given sequence, where, I mean, if, as long as uh, uh, the sequence is already designed evolutionarily, it actually defines the unique native states. And the folding uh, uh, pathway is kind of a, a, a smooth, folding landscape is smooth, smooth such that uh, as long as you uh, you are sitting in some light condition, let's say uh, low temperature, then it can get to the native state very easily uh, via smooth landscape. Okay, hydrophobic patches are uh, in the in the native state. Hydrophobic patches in the sequestered sequestered in the interior of the structure, such that there's a, a, a kind of a, a structure is very compact and there's no uh, hydrophobic patches exposed to the exterior of the structure. Uh, that uh, so that uh, you don't need to worry about the, some sort of aggregation kind of stuff. Okay. Oh, however, not all the f protein can be folded nicely. I mean, at least 30% of the uh, entire pro proteome uh, has some problem of spontaneous folding. It doesn't actually fold into the right structure. So in that case, you can actually imagine the very rugged landscape uh, uh, like this. So um, in, in this kind of very rugged landscape, only a fraction of the, the population can fold into native state, and then rest of them are actually trapped in the kinetic trap. So one minus five of them are uh, trapped in the computing basin of attraction. So uh, you can actually think about uh, some folding pathway in many different parallel pathways. So in this kind of scenario, um, uh, folding uh, kinetic can be described by this kind of this kind of kinetic scheme. Uh, and the phi, the, the, which is called the partition factor, is defined by the two kinetic rate, collapse rate, to the native and misfolded state. So this uh, process, going directly from the misfolded state and native state, is very slow because of a large free energy barrier. That actually doesn't uh, occur on a biological level on time scale. So, um, so essentially, Folding can occur in this direct pathway, but this fraction is very small. And then most of them are trapped in the, this misfolded state and trapped in a, such a long time that uh, you, you don't see the transition from here to here. So uh, then the problem is uh, this is a kinetic uh, expression for the entire folding. As long as KS is kind of uh, uh, not too small, then you can actually discover the native states 
can, uh, the, the kinetic rate to the native state can be described by this kind, kind of a kinetic rate. Uh, however, uh, when the, this uh, KS is very, very small, then uh, uh, but on the biological end of time scale, only you can actually see the only fraction of uh, the population is uh, being folded into the native state. Okay? So, uh, so we have the problem with these hydrophobic patches. So in the cellular condition, when, when this kind of misfolded state is like a dominate, uh, dominant, then, then you need to worry about the aggregation of this uh, misfolded, uh, st uh, among the misfolded uh, proteins. So that causes a lot of problem for, for the uh, cellular uh, function. So uh, cells are equipped with this kind of protein chaperone. Uh, one of the best studies of the protein chaperone is grow here. And, and it looks like uh, some sort of a, like a cylinder, better like a structure. It actually have a cavity, cavity interior of the structure, and then it actually engulfs this uh, misfolded, uh, it recognizes the misfolded structure, hydrophobic patch of the misfolded structure, and then it uh, engulfs it inside the, inside the cavity and then spit it out. So, and, and uh, you, you need to, we need, I, I want to emphasize that this, this machine actually consumes a lot of uh, energy from the ATP and they actually undergoes large conformational change. This large conformational change is coupled with uh, this, uh, coupled to be the protein and it exerts a lot of mechanical force to the proteins. So uh, the, this trapped, uh, you know, this the this the uh, protein trapped inside this cavity or maybe it can, it doesn't need to be trapped inside the cavity, but uh, when, whenever this misfolded states or protein interact with the chaperone, it can it, it, it the some uh, 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 force exerted by the, pro, uh, the chaperone in action, and then it, it, it unfolded. So, so what happens in terms of, uh, so when this cycle uh, can be actually, when this cycle can be easily repeated, then, uh, then a lot of uh, this folded protein is unfolded into the uh, um, unfolded into the unfolded states. Okay. So what happens in the in, in terms of uh, uh, landscape? Uh, this is the landscape, and the chaperone actually capture the uh, this folded protein and and then uh, unfold into the uh, and reset the reset the structure into the unfolded states. So in a sense, it actually uh, uh, performs some sort of error correction. Okay. So when this process is repeated, iteratively repeated, then what happens is that it actually annihilates the system into the native uh, states, native population. So when uh, uh, protein, uh, uh, the, the chaperone recognizes this folded protein and then unfolds and unfolds and unfolds, and after n iteration, this is a uh, uh, population of unfolded states, and then uh, population of native states uh, actually evolve like this uh, with this equation. Okay, as time goes on, then this is the population of native states. Actually, in the cellular uh, environment, population of native states increase like exponentially, and the time scale of this uh, exponential increase is dictated by this uh, this uh, tau zero, which is the cycle of uh, one cycle of uh, chaperone in action divided by the fraction of this uh, partition coefficient of the uh, spontaneous folding, okay? So uh, typically this grow year, this tau zero, the uh, one cycle is about two seconds, and for a protein like Lubisco, this phi can be as small as uh, 1%. So the total amount of time needed for uh, folding the entire population into the native state is about uh, 200 seconds. This is the estimate you can actually make. So shifting our gear to the RNA folding, uh, the story is about the same, but uh, slightly different. I mean, so uh, so this is the this so the uh, the story is in, same in the sense that uh, this RNA is defined by the four different sequence G U C uh, A G C A U, and then it actually first collapsed into some second structure, and then under the uh, under some proper condition like a magnesium ion, it actually uh, uh, assembled into a three-dimensional structure. Uh, in this particular RNA is, is actually, I'm showing the group one internal ribozyme, it actually uh, displays the catalytic activity, I mean self-splicing cat catalytic activity. However, this folding, uh, uh, yield of a folding effectiveness of folding is very low. Is uh, This phi is only 0 0.08, 
eight, so only eight percent of the population can afford uh, the native states or spontaneous read actually needs some help from the Adam and Chaperone, okay? So cell is also equipped with uh, this kind of another machinery, so this Adam and Chaperone, is, uh, is, uh, the name is actually uh, site 19 is just one of the best studies of Adam and Chaperone. It was discovered in the early 2000, and it actually shows helicase activity. It, it unwinds the surface exposed to helices. So whenever some helices is exposed to the surface, they actually, it actually unwinds, this, it recognizes this kind of helix, surface exposed to helices, helices and unwinds these helices into the single-stranded RNA. Okay, this is what happens. Um, so, Site 19 can uh, recognize, uh, but uh, uh, because of the exposed helices is also in the in the native states. So not only uh, this is uh, native state, but also um, misfolded states have this kind of exposed exposed helices. So what these people uh, uh, found in their studies that uh, when you add the Site 19. It actually unfolded the native states, native RNA as well as misfolded RNA. So, and and also they found that uh, regardless of the initial population, native and misfolded RNA which uh, steady state value, uh, uh, which is not equal to one. So, in the case of Gruyere, if you actually add the uh, protein chaperone, I mean you add the chaperone, entire population of uh, the protein get to the uh, native states. Uh, uh, a after a long time, but but in this case, if you wait for a long time, it actually some uh, value which is not actually zero. And then and another point is that if you add more chaperone, uh, native state uh, population actually decrease. This is what what they found, uh, which is kind of a, a weird. But I get to this uh, later. Uh, 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 I I try to explain discuss uh, th this observation later. Okay. So, um, in, 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 uh, in terms of this kind of logged landscape, what uh, Adam and Chaperon does is the following. They actually recognize misfolded states and then reset the system into the unfolded states, okay, intermediate states. And not only that, it actually also recognizes the native states and then unfold it and then reset the native state in the, in, in, to the, to the uh, 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 initial condition, okay, but of uh, different extent. So um, it recognizes misfolded states better, but uh, if the kappa is actually, so therefore kappa is smaller than uh, one, it's, the number is between zero and one, okay. So the iterative amino mechanism I write down the equation has to be uh, modified to some uh, some other form. Okay, this is the, uh, uh, the equation which I derive for the Gruyere. But uh, um, uh, other than chaperone, you have to write down. You have to uh, need to include the effect of kappa in the equation. Okay, we need some modification. So we need to generalize this iterative annealing mechanism by RNA chaperone into uh, to this way. Okay, so let's assume uh, there is some uh, uh, sequence of RNA. It actually folds into the native and misfolded state. Okay, chaperone recognize this uh, misfolded RNA and then reset the system into the unfolded state and then give another chance to fold. Then this population is divided into the uh, folded state and the misfolded state again. Okay, this is what happens in the glow here, right? Um, but not only that, the chaperone actually recognizes the native state as well and then unfolds. It actually recognizes exposed helix and then unfolds it so that uh, the, even the native states uh, are given another chance to refold. So, first, a couple of them are uh, uh, mis uh, unfolded and the one minus couple of them are left uh, left folded. So this is the population uh, of being, uh, uh, being, uh, uh, being uh, not being affected by the chaperone, and this population will be given the another chance to fold and fold. Okay. So therefore, at the second stage of this uh, iteration, what happens is that uh, population. This is the first stage of the uh, spontaneous folding. Uh, this misfolded population, and second stage. Second iteration, these are the population of misfolded states, right? Okay, M2. And this top population is actually uh, uh, 
uh, folded states. So if you repeat this process many, many times, then you can write down this, this kind of recursion relation, and then you can actually solve the equation. So this, this one coming from this pathway, and this one coming from this pathway, and then you have to add these two. So uh, you can think about some sort of this kind of logic. Then uh, finally, you can get the uh, uh, native population at after any iteration of uh, this kind of process, right? So the native yield can be uh, obtained by uh, solving this recursion relation, and this is the expression, okay? So which is the function of kappa and n iteration, and the partition factor phi, okay? So if you plot this partition uh, the, uh, native yield as a function of the uh, iteration time or time, then this is the curve, which apparently parameterized with, uh, with respect to kappa. When kappa equals zero, uh, uh, the case is uh, <coughs> exactly the same as the Gruyere. So every population, all the population reaches the native states when kappa equals zero. However, when kappa increase, the, uh, the steady state population is not one, uh, but uh, some number which is more than one, okay? So, uh, and the steady state population is you can actually obtain by putting this n equal to infinity. So this is the expression, okay? And kappa equal zero, this is the expression for, it's the same expression as Gruyere. Uh, and when kappa equal one, which means that the uh, uh, native state and misfolded state is recognized equally by the uh, uh, RNA chaperone, then there's nothing happens, right? Uh, the, the, I mean, because the chaperone acting on the native states as well as the uh, misfolded states equally likely, so therefore there's no effect by the chaperone. So the native yields just remain as phi, so nothing happens when kappa equal one, okay? So, but um, what is the uh, I mean, meaning of this kappa? To get a better idea, we can actually map this entire landscape picture into Three state model. Like if you see it, there's a, uh, I mean, arrow going down and the arrow going up, and there is some transition from a uh, misfolded state to native state, potential transition between these two states. Therefore, you can actually map this one into the three state kinetic model, reversible kinetic model, like this. Uh, and this is a, just a very prototypical example in the non equilibrium statistical thermodynamics. So uh, you can solve everything. So this uh, uh, magenta arrow is uh, due to the chaperone action, which uh, increases with the, uh, so because of uh, burning ATP, the rate is, of this chaperone action uh, can be increased. So it actually function of ATP. So if you add more and more ATP, then this uh, rate increase, uh, you know, micellian type, uh, hyperbolically increase like this, okay? And this three state uh, kinetic model can be solved analytically and you can actually get the expression for the uh, current flowing in this, in this cycle. So this is an expression for current. So uh, imbalance of the kinetic rate actually produce some sort of non-vanishing uh, current like this. So if we kill everyone, there's no current in this cycle. I mean, all the I and M and N species will be equilibrated via the uh, Boltzmann rate. However, if there's any imbalance, I mean, Ki, and MN and KNI and something like that. So, so I mean, forward rate and reverse rate, there's, if there's any imbalance, then there will be current. So that's the signature of a non equilibrium. And also, you can actually get the uh, uh, steady state population of native states or misfolded states and even I states. So these are the expression, okay? So, um, so to, I mean, so these are the, uh, so, so the, the expression for this uh, uh, native yield as steady states, uh, as I mentioned, can be obtained by putting this n equal infinity, this is the steady state expression for the native states. And you can now compare this expression and, and this expression in you know, a certain condition. So this entire full expression can be actually uh, compare with this expression, if you think about, in, in, in our previous scenario, I said that this, no, uh, this, I assume that this rate is very small, okay? 
And then, uh, so, so what happens is the following. Okay, so I mean, you, you, if you actually put this expression into this statistical expression, uh, native yield is expressed by this three kinetic rate and the kappa, right? Uh, and however, in this expression, if you actually assume this, this rate is very small, then uh, what you get is the following expression. Okay, so you can compare this kappa and this. Uh, it, it, this kappa can be expressed by this two rate ratio of this two rate. This two rate is nothing but a ratio between these two um, uh, arrow from uh, unfolding rate from native state, unfolding rate of the unfolding uh, uh, state in, uh, by the chaperone. Okay, the ratio between the two. Okay. So in the absence of a chaperone. Um, uh, KMI and uh, K KMI is actually zero. In this case, you can actually erase this two arrow, I mean reverse arrow, and then what happens is that uh, you know this RNA or protein actually get into these two states, L and N, and then as long as you can wait for low time, then these two species will be equilibrated. So when I mean this is just a hypothetical situation, so. If you wait for a long time, then uh, in the essence of chaperone, they actually uh, get to the equilibrium distribution. Okay, so you just uh, uh, get rid of this M M M I and K N I, and then you just erase all the term associated with this rate constant. Then you actually uh, obtain this expression. So steady state expression for native states is nothing but equilibrium distribution. Is equilibrium uh, uh, probability uh, for the native states. Which is dictated by stability difference between and between the misfolded and native states, right? So, uh, in fact, this is the conventional view. I mean, what is the aim of a, a, a molecular chaperone? In conventional view, uh, people consider that the biochemists typically consider the molecular chaperone consumes ATP free energy to. Uh, 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 um, establish native yield to about the Boltzmann distribution. But this, this was the conventional view, but the, our view is a little bit different. Molecular chaperone actually consumes a lot of, lots and lots of ATP free energy to establish a non equilibrium steady state distribution dictated by the, this kind of rate, I mean, kinetic rate constant. Okay, so therefore, uh, this uh, equilibrium distribution and steady state distribution should be dif different, but the confusion was that. Uh, uh, in the, in, for the case of Gloria, which is, uh, has been studied for the last 30 years, uh, it, this is a bit hard to actually discern this distribution, this, this, uh, this distribution, because uh, for the case of Gloria, kappa equals zero. So when kappa equals zero, as you can see, this steady state uh, distribution for the native state is just to, uh, steady state in the native state is just a one, right? And uh, it, uh, for for, for the case of many protein, the stability difference with, is uh, between native and resource is very large. So equivalent distribution is also close to one. So there's, a, there's no way actually distinguish whether this mechanism is uh, uh, due to the equilibrium or the non-equilibrium. But at, at least for the RNA case, this is kind of obvious. I mean, as, you, as I showed you, uh, RNA steady state and native state is not the uh, 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 the probability is not one, it's so just a non zero value, right? So uh, apparently, I, we, uh, we actually try to compute how many ATP has to be consumed to actually to, uh, to, uh, to forward this world state to the native state for this kind of library case. We analyzed experimental data and then we found that about 100 ATP has to be consumed uh, for, for, uh, for the correctly uh, uh, the misworld state in the native state. Okay, and okay, as I pointed out, unlike protein chaperone, RNA chaperone actually, if you add more and more RNA chaperone because kappa equals non zero, uh, it actually reduces the pop, uh, native population into non zero value, actually, uh, non unity value. So if you add more and more chaperone, the native yield actually decreases. That's kind of puzzling because uh, then why, why, why on earth you are using the RNA chaperone to fold the uh, 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 RNA? It actually unfold the RNA and then putting it into the misfolded state. But what, if you think about this as a kind of non-equilibrium 
machine, you have to uh, think about the speed per unit time. So if you consider, if you put, uh, multiply this uh, uh, native steady state yield by, by the time scale of this entire process, actually both processes increase as a function of chaperone concentration. Okay? So molecular chaperone basically ma maximizes native yield uh, on a biological time scale by driving the substrate out of equilibrium. So that, that's, that's the mechanism, okay? So uh, all this, even though I just do div uh, multiply this lambda from the some number we obtain from the analysis, uh, this lambda can be actually obtained uh, by, uh, I mean, analytically from the three-state kinetic model. So you just multiply this lambda and, and then this is the entire expression for the small phi and the large phi. And I mean, as you see, if you increase the chaperone action, lambda PSS increase uh, whatever uh, kappa is. I mean, it, it always increase the, uh, uh, this uh, yield per unit time. To summarize, uh, so I talked about the logit lens, folding on the logit landscape. Uh, in that kind of logit landscape, uh, protein or RNA has to fold uh, via kinetic partitioning mechanism and then uh, chaperone uh, basically uh, help the folding of a protein or RNA by iterative annealing mechanism, which is uh, uh, essentially non-equilibrium. And then uh, iterative annealing mechanism, the previous iterative annealing mechanism should, has to be uh, generalized uh, by considering the unfolding of a native RNA, native state. And so uh, the final conclusion is that the chaperone, which expands a lot of the ATP, drives the population of protein or RNA out of equilibrium and making the native population more accessible on a biological time scale, okay? So I think uh, time is, I think I have a little bit more slide, but uh, time is up. So, so this many, many of the work was done with Yong uh, uh, Song. He was actually uh, in my group now, he's uh, working, doing some experimental ex experiments in uh, Harvard. And, and these are the collaborator and then these are the paper, uh, I mean, just I summarize all the contents of the paper and then put it into this slide, okay. Thank you very much. The degradation of proteins. Yes. Uh, should also play into this, right? Because there's a lot of ubiquitinization that, right? So that they're also going down the ubiquitin, the you know the uh, degradation funnel at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I haven't actually, but uh, but degradation rate is actually compared to other rates. It's very small. Uh, maybe this may be degradation rate is comparable to this transition, but as I uh, uh, described this rate, direct, uh, direct transition from native to uh, misfolded state or vice versa is a kind of, a, uh, not, is a kind of a, uh, negligible in, in my story, and the degradation is also very small. So, but in principle, you can write down all the effects. So I, I haven't actually explained the situation in vivo, but uh, uh, you can actually write down the old equation and then get this kind of expression. So, which take into account the effect of degradation. Yeah. But the story just remains the same. Overall message I convey remains the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Professor Hyun, uh, yes. thanks for a great talk. So, uh, uh, can you tell uh, what would be another benefit having a non equilibrium? Uh, uh, system compared to the, uh, the steady state. The left side example was sort of fully steady state thing, but right side example, RNA, chaperone, what is uh, non-equilibrium dynamics? What is the biological? Yeah, everything is non-equilibrium here. Yeah, 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 but here is pseudo, kind of, what is the benefit of having this flux in this flux? system? Yeah, yeah, in biological um, sense. So be benefit, maybe I can, uh, uh, I can talk about the benefit in this way. So what happens is that um, all, even, even though the yield of, of the uh, yield of native state is smaller, what, if you have a large flux, then 
even though that population is small, you can make that accessible to the cellular condition. That's very important. So even if your, uh, uh, let's say your yield is like 100%, but if this yield, is, yield getting to 100% take like one hour, then what's the benefit, right? You, if this is a process is a very, very slow process, then bio, the biological system will be uh, dead after 10 minutes. So you have to make the things very accessible to the system, even though it is small. That's very important, I think. That's the role of chaperone, I would say. That's kind of a, a not uh, well appreciated by the experimental community, at least the biochemical community. It's, this, is, this point is not appreciated very well, right? So when you are considering the ATP consumption, uh, 100 ATPs, I think, then you are also considering the amount of ADP that is produced due to the ATP hydrolysis. Right, right, right. Uh, means ATP versus uh, ATP to ADP ratio is fixed in your system. Right, it's there, yeah. So, but the thing is, uh, this is kind of a local uh, situation, right? The concentration of ATP and ADP is maintained to be one millimole and 70 micromole in the cellular condition. This is uh, taken care of by other machineries like ATP, F1, F0, ATPase, all this kind of stuff. They actually uh, 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 take care of the homeostasis of the cellular environment. Okay. So concentration is a kind of fixed. There are some, you can consider there are some chemical baths. External chemical baths is actually working on, uh, on, on this system so that uh, you don't need to worry about the production of ADP, but it will be degraded. Or, I mean, putting it back to the uh, uh, ATP by the ATP synthase. Yeah, so, so entire concentration remain constant. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments? Uh, I, I think there can be a multiple state of misfolded. So my question is that uh, is it okay to consider all that multiple misfolded states into the one state? Uh, say, say that again? I, I cannot hear, can you? Oh, so, so, can okay. you say it without mask? I, I think there can be a multiple states. Much or, what? Uh, multiple misfolded states. Multiple yes, misfolded states, yeah, 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 sure, local, sure. There can be several I see. local minimum. So, but you explained it, it as a one state. Uh, there are multiple protein states, uh, but I, I um, okay. So, so you, you, are, you are mentioning, uh, referring to this state, right? Yeah, yes. This is like a many state, but I just said that this is an ensemble of M state, uh -huh. which is somehow separated by the time scale from the native states. Mm -hmm. You can actually have a transition between, M, uh, between uh, misfolded state, maybe, I don't know, but mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, uh, I can, consider this as ensemble of the misfolded states, which mm -hmm. is uh, separated far away from the native state by the larger barrier. Uh, so this is the situation. Oh, thank you. I, I have a question. Yeah. It, it seems uh, ISS make a lot of uh, mistakes and errors, but uh, Penny, for you, you show us on some theoretical viewpoint how can you confirm that uh, this view is, this calculation is uh, correct in real cells? This calculation is correct for the, I, I would say for molecular chaperone, but not, not all the resetting process, I mean error correction process, but, but, uh, uh, but general, general underlying idea is that the um, baseline is that uh, in order for doing this, uh, in order to make some error correction, you have to consume ATP. And error question means you are resetting things into the, and then give another chance to, uh, for this system to uh, evolve again, right? So this is the idea of resetting. So it sounds a plausible uh, oh, right, right, idea. But, but it's not purely theoretical. I never show, I didn't show any experimental data, but there are a lot of the experimental data actually supporting this and uh, this whole, uh, like, let's say, um, the graph I showed you, I mean, 
the, this graph is uh, there are data point I, I didn't actually specify, but, but these are the these numbers are all from the experimental feeding. And then after feeding that, uh, uh, after determining many, many parameters, I actually draw this line actually. So, so um, it's not just a thought experiment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there I are some, I was yeah, real data analysis. Because there. you showed only clean. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there are okay. many, I mean, noisy data points, but I just removed everything, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Another question? Oh. Okay, if, if not, uh, let's thank to Professor Hyang.